but while you're here, grab your laptop, because we're definitely gonna need that. Good news, you only have to download 23 gigs of stuff. Uh, so if you haven't started that yet, I really hope your 4G connection is great. If not, well, tough luck. Just kidding. All the stuff that we have for you is in a browser. Uh, so whoever was on the iPad, good choice. Very good choice, because it is gonna work for you. And here we go. My colleague Nick is gonna join us in a second. I'm just gonna make sure we're all ready for the workshop. So before we get started, I know the keynotes were amazing. Well, the kickoff over there. Who of you is using a service mesh right now? I like the, uh, the handshaking, it's like, yeah, are we using a service mesh or are we not? It's, uh, that, that is always a question, right? Too many options. Who's running um, Envoy uh, console? What, what are you using? Shout it out. Sweet. That's, that's going to be a fun workshop then. So uh, while you have your devices, head on over to hashi.co slash smc22-workshop and you should land in a platform called Instruct, which is, well, an online training environment. And while we wait for that to happen, what you're gonna see is a browser interface where we have some documentation for you, a couple of commands on the sidebar, and other things. There should be a green button that says click here to get started. Hop on over. Say again? Don't touch the green button yet. No, definitely touch the green button. I mean, if you can't open it up, it's not yours, right? De definitely touch the green button. So let's switch over to the browser view. What do you want? Let me uh, let the professional uh, do that. What happened to a simple maximize button? Uh, life would be too simple with that. All right, so, there we go. If you hit the green button at the lower right, mine says next right now because I'm one step ahead, yours should say start. You should be presented with this very same interface. And if all of this looks good, do me a favor and click on interactive terminal. For us it just says interactive because we zoomed in I think. Oh. And you should see this terminal. And in here, I'm just gonna need you to run one command, which is shipyard status, as my lovely assistant is doing right now. The URL is, um, if you switch over uh, to Keynote, yeah, there we go. So you can tell we take this seriously because we aligned this to the slide. Could have just hit the play button on that. Show people how sausage is made. Damn. Good morning. Just want to make sure you know, like all the all the stuff is working. Can you imagine if that was an alarm clock? Oh, man. All right. I, I'd be awake right now. Did the uh, URL work for you? Good. Yeah. So this is the sound that plays when somebody opens a workshop for the first time. Uh, with that. It is the sound of a thousand computers being slowly tortured. Yes, yes it is. Uh, sweet. So if you run shipyard status, like Nick did, you should see roughly uh, 42 things that worked out. If not, raise your hand and we'll walk over to you and help you figure it out. I'm getting a memory address, so maybe it's going to be Ah, yeah, okay, so in your case, um, open a new terminal, uh, and if you can in incognito mode, then we'll go from there. So we have um, everything that we're going to run through today. We will, you know, we're going to run through this as a, as a group. The instructions are are all here in a kind of a self-led approach. So if we don't kind of get through, or you want to kind of come back and run through this at your leisure, then you you know you can feel absolutely free free to do so. 
um, we've we've tried to kind of build this, as I say, in a way that you know you can you can kind of go through things, and then we can we can kind of pick things up a little bit self-started as well. So the the first thing that I want to kind of say is that Karim uses natural scrolling on his Mac. There is nothing natural about natural scrolling. So I'm going to make um, some excuses. So we, in terms of the, the, the service, can I grab this out of there? In terms of the service mesh that we were going to be kind of using today, it is an Envoy-based service mesh. It, it's console service mesh because that's the one that we, we know. But it doesn't matter whether you use console or whether you use Trafic or Kong or Istio or you know whichever one you're using because Envoy being the, the standard which it is, the kind of most of the things that we're going to kind of cover will be will be easily transferable. Now, I do kind of want to put a, a little sort of disclaimer around that in that it is possible to configure Envoy in a number of different ways. And specifically, it's possible to configure the way that Envoy presents uh, metrics and tags to you. And this is directly through Envoy's configuration. So some of the, the, the metrics in their naming that we run through might not be exactly the same in, the, in your specific service mesh, but we're going to give you all of the information to, to be able to kind of figure out what they are and, and to be able to do a lot of the diagnostics that I think you, you kind of want to run through. So the first thing that I want to, to kind of talk about is, is this, and this is the, the kind of the topology of Envoy. And what I've tried to do is kind of pull out some of the, the core components because all of the, the statistics inside of Envoy are deeply rooted to these concepts. So you have the concept of a listener, and this is just, you know, TCP, UDP. It's, it's the kind of the, the ingress into the Envoy proxy. And... Then from, from a listener, you have a, a listener filter. And a listener filter is, is going to be something simple. It might be TCP, it might be HTTP. You've got the capabilities around um, uh, sorry, gRPC and also things around authentication. So if you're using a policy-based authentication flow, you'll probably find that that's implemented in Envoy's listener filter. Then Envoy has the, the, the routers. And again, it depends on which listener filter you're using, but, but routers give you the capability to, to define things like timeouts, retries, in, in the instance of, of anything that's kind of HTTP-based. And ultimately, you then start to get into load balancing and clusters. So the, the kind of the clusters, that, that's your, your list of endpoints that your request is going to be routed to. Now... A cluster can be a, a local app, which is basically Envoy is talking to your main application, or it can be an upstream. And that segues nicely kind of um, into, into this. But let, let's kind of dig into those in a little bit more depth. In fact, my glamorous assistant can scroll down for me. This is a bit, bit flickery, but right. So a listener. So a listener is a named network location. It, it's predominantly your IP and port or your Unix socket that can be connected to by a downstream client. And we'll, we'll kind of get on to the concept of downstream and upstream because some, like, I think sometimes it's confusing because you think downstream and you think, well, a, a sort of a, a river flows, right? So you go downstream, you're going with the river. So you'd think, well, downstream, therefore that is service A to service B is downstream, right? No, no, it's not. Because, well, why make it easy and, and sort of on a mental concept like that? Downstream is actually service B to service A. Now, that's, that's kind of a confusing concept because it doesn't, you know, mentally I didn't, so I don't get that right. But then you've got to think about where the, the sort of the term came from. The term came from when they were starting to, to kind of coin the, the uh, sort of thinking about HTTP. And you're thinking about it in terms of a request and a response. So the reason that downstream is B to A is because you're thinking about the flow of data. And at the time, when they kind of coined these terms, the bulk of the data was going downstream. You would make a request for data upstream to a service. The data would then be flow. Sorry, the, all of that bytes and all of that information would flow downstream. 
back to the original requester. So that's the kind of the, the downstream upstream. And again, a lot of the metrics inside of Envoy are rooted to downstream and upstream. So it's, it is a, um, an important concept just to remember that. And finally, we, uh, we have the cluster. And a cluster is just a, a group of kind of um, logically associated endpoints. So in, in Envoy, that, that can be quite disparate. I mean, it's, for example, payments, which we have in our example application, consists of three pods. So there will be a cluster in Envoy which has three endpoints, each corresponding to one of the payments pod. A cluster in Envoy doesn't have to be that straightforward. You can have a cluster which is pulled from multiple different types. You know, there, there's concepts around being able to build virtual services, but ultimately, a kind of um, a cluster is a collection of endpoints, including your local your local service. So that's kind of a way to think about it. Now, the the, the example application that we're we're going to run through is a is a three tier application, and it's it's built of of three different services. So we have API, and API is a, a single instance. It's a, an HTTP RESTful service, and that makes requests upstream to the, the payments service. Now, the payment service is actually three instances, and it's comprised of two instances of V1 and one instance of V2. Now, the V2 service has been deliberately misconfigured so that it reports 20% of errors because we want to be able to see some errors in our metrics. So we've, we've got a deliberately badly um, configured application. API makes one request for payments for every request it receives, so it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Payments then talks to currency, and currency is a gRPC-based service. Again. We, we have one of the instances, of the, of the two instances, with the V2 service has been misconfigured so that we are going to be reporting 20% of any request to the V2 instance of the gRPC service is going to result in an error. And that's going to return you a gRPC error code 13. So this is a kind of a key thing that we'll get to, but I don't know how familiar you all are with, with, with gRPC based services, but they don't use um, HTTP response codes, they use gRPC error codes, so it is a, a slightly different um, concept. And kind of a, from a, a graphical perspective, it, it looks like this, and this is a, look, I'm, I'm going to hold my hands up and say it's a bit of a weird way to lay out a uh, flow diagram for a for a service to service communication, but it's trying to fit it all on the page. But you can see, as I say, we, we have three instances of payments, one of which is mad, uh, misbehaving, which goes through to, somebody made a typo there. Yeah. Oh, that's my vet. Um, I'm not going to answer that right now. Uh, so we have two instances of currency, V1 and V2. Currency V2, same 20% error rate. So again, we'll be able to in interrogate that and see those, those metrics. And... This is an important bit. So we're going to be using, most of the time, we're going to be just using Grafana. Now, the, the metric system that we, or the metric stack that we have in our example application is Prometheus Grafana. Whether you're using Prometheus Grafana, whether you're using Datadog, um, uh, Lightstep, um, Honeycomb, what, you know, whatever sort of metrics platform you're using, other than the sort of the, the, the subtle differences around the, the language, because we're going to be looking at prom SQL in, in order to sort of build our dashboards, it's going to be very fairly trans, translatable. Now, Grafana, you're going to have to log in when the first time you use Grafana. The, the, we used what we think is probably the most secure username and password, which is admin admin. Now, Grafana will ask you to change your password. Just say no. Because if you do change your password, and then it logs you out, and you forget what the password is, then I can't help you, and you're going to have to start again. So in the spirit of security, we'll have all this code available for you afterwards, still with the same passwords. This is a workshop environment. 
we do silly stuff so we can all learn from it. Uh, Nick was kind enough to say that we deliberately made that service uh, suck about one out of five times. Uh, that's that's my, my doing, I'm very proud of that. More importantly though, when you deploy this, make sure your network is not open to the world. There are way better ways to get up to speed with those passwords. Don't use admin admin. It has to be said because then it's not our fault. Yeah, but who's gonna, who's honestly gonna think, no hacker in the world is gonna think you, that people are gonna be stupid enough to use admin admin. Therefore, admin admin is probably the greatest password. Depends on the dictionary attack that you're going through, yeah. Do we have the disclaimer on there about getting, if anybody gets sued for using admin admin, the Grafana password, then we're not, we're not liable. I'll, I'll show them. If we, if we don't have that in the documentation, just, uh, just so you know. Okay. Now, the, the other thing that you're going to use, we do have a, an interactive terminal there that you used before, but we, we've got a terminal which is built into the documentation. There's, there's going to be some steps in the workshop where we're going to want to dig into um, Envoy and we're going to want to look at things like the config dump because we're going to kind of like understand some of the, the topology. We're going to understand how we can identify metrics by actually looking at the Envoy configuration. And for that, there's a terminal built into the documentation which is going to um, allow you to do that. For most things, you, you don't need to copy pasta or type on your own. There will be a big blue button and if you can click the big blue button there, Kareem, please. I think um, my environment just timed out, so I'm going to reload this one real quick. Okay. Then um, clicking the big blue button, what that will do is that will automatically run the command in the terminal again. You know, the, most of this stuff is literally just exacting into a pod and running a curl to, to get the, the config dump or to, to look at the, the, the clusters and things like that. And with that, we're ready to, to begin. Um, we're just going to restart our environment. So the environments are, are um, will run for, for two hours. If you come back to this, say tomorrow or something like that, it might take about three minutes for an environment to, to create because we, we currently have them switched on. Hot start today, but you know, just, just bear with it. It's, it's doing a lot of stuff. It's creating a Kubernetes cluster. It's deploying a bunch of applications. It's installing Prometheus and Grafana and, and Service Mesh and and all of that, and as, as somebody who has worked in this industry for quite a while, three minutes is nothing short of a miracle when it used to take three months to get an individual Apache server. No. <laughs> no, not at all. They, um, the, the pods should, should have come up, so there might just be, is everybody getting pending on their pods? Okay, so you're running now. Uh, you're still, it's still pending. Yeah, let's have a, let's have a look. It's probably, I hope it's not getting. Um, I hope it's not getting blocked by sort of Docker Hub or something like that. Uh, let me. Yeah, just do it. So while Nick uh, looks at that, quick note about this environment. Uh, Shipyard makes it easy to spin up a ton of services that you want to try out. We've got a couple of different templates around. And when I say a couple, I mean a couple of hundred um, for pretty much everything that you can imagine. For a repeatable development environment locally, this is very nice. It helps you out. Go ahead. Have we, um, have we changed the size of the machines? Uh, they're all eight or 12 gig ones. Okay, so we're getting some insufficient CPU. Um, which pod is that? All right, so don't, let's, I'm gonna hot fix this because I'm just gonna basically remove any of the resource, um, uh, resource boundaries because it doesn't actually use a great deal of CPU. But we can, we can continue because the first part of, um, is predominantly going to use the cluster um, for API and looking at the connections there. 
So is everybody pretty much getting that on the, the payments pod? All right. Don't worry. It's not, uh, it's not the end of the world. Maybe. So com connection metrics. Now, the, the first thing we want to look at is, is connections. We're going to look at connections. We're going to look at requests. We're going to look at gRPC services and methods. And then we're going to dig into to also into retries. There's, there's limited time we've got available. But what I, what I kind of want to be able to take you through is the um, kind of the, the, what I would see as kind of like a lot of the core things, but also give you the ability that you kind of start to, to understand where you can kind of go. And, and discover things further. So Envoy has very common connection metrics. Now, what, what you have are um, active connections, total connections, and destroyed connections. These are kind of like the core things. Now, they're, they're comprised of a gauge counter and gauges and counters. Do, do, we, do you understand the, what a gauge is within, um, within metrics? Everybody understands that? Yeah. So a gauge is basically a, a snapshot. It is, at present, there are n items of this thing, whereas a counter continually increments. So something like a gauge, as I say, it's, it's a snapshot in time. With, with a counter, you've got the ability to, to do things look at um, change over time, so requests per second or connections created per second. So in terms of, like, connections created, well, that doesn't exist as an Envoy metrics, but what you have is total and destroyed. So the, what you can look at is the increment of the total connections, that's going to give you the number of connections that have been created over time. And then the, the connections destroyed is obviously the, the, the number of connections which are, are destroyed. And why this is, is an important thing to, to kind of look at is it, it's, I think, sort of fundamentally interesting around the health of your applications. Because what we're going to kind of see when we're looking through this is that, well, it's not always good that connections are opened and closed all of the time. Like, you, you've got to think about the way that the service mesh works. So the service mesh is, is from proxy to proxy, making an MTLS connection. Now, the MTLS process requires a handshake. You've got to do the various key strops and things like that in order to start encrypting traffic. So it, in certain instances, it's not always ideal to have lots of connections coming up and going down. In an ideal world, you, what you want is a connection pool where you're reusing those connections. And, and I think in, in for, the, for the most part, that's, that's actually okay for an application. It is okay for different HTTP requests to be pushed over a connection that's been reused from a different request. Now, we're going we're gonna to kind of look at all of those things, and we're going to look at how we can get that information and, and also how we can, we can query that information. So... First things first is looking at downstream um, connections. So what what we have here, and the first um, the first thing that we're going to look at is active API downstream connections. So this are the number of connections that are coming in to your service. And we're going to look at the API. And the API is kind of the, uh, the, the end point. So with, um, with that, if you can click on your Grafana tab, and what I would like you to do is go to the the explore, which is this button here. 
So I think do we have we have two tabs anyway. So you probably got a tab, which I think is the second one, which will take you direct to that. But the password's admin, admin, and don't change it because we're keeping things secure. Oh, okay, so you can, uh, if you just log in again there, it's just admin, admin, it's um, on this one. I just skip. And then just this one here, it's the little little wheel, if you click on that. Okay, cool. So the if, if you've not used Grafana before, or even if you have and you, you didn't, you weren't aware of this, but the, the explore, Capability is really good when you're kind of doing some some metric archaeology. It's it's a really easy way to kind of start looking at some of the the metrics in the system without having to to go through and, and create a dashboard. And the first one we want to look at is active downstream connections. So, oops. So this is what we're going to end up building, and um, there's a lot of information there. So we're going to we're going to kind of look at this, and we're going to filter through it. Can you scroll down a little bit for me, please? All right, cool. So first things first. So if you if you click in your um, your explore tab, and just start typing Envoy Listener downstream, or even just start typing downstream, and you're going to start to see that that Grafana is is going to pull out all of those metrics from, from Prometheus. And what we want is we want the, the ability to, to kind of, well, the, the, the metric, the specific metric that we're looking for is Envoy Listener downstream CX, which is the, the, the sort of the shortcut for connection, and active. And if you, if you display that up on, on your screen, So, okay. So I'm going to do this with you, and I'm going to grab this over here. I'm going to admin and admin, login, change my password, forget it, press not now. So we're in our explore tab. Down. So there's there are a huge number of um, oh sorry there's a, there's a huge number of, of metrics which are uh, available. Envoy is very granular in the number of um, in, in the stuff that it admits, and it can be quite confusing sometimes as to to what you should use. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at downstream connections active. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to change the, the duration here just to the last five minutes. So we're pushing some, some fake load through the system, and we're, we're pushing approximately 12 requests per second through it. So let's have a, let's have a look at this. Now, we've got an, a number of different metrics, and we've got connection metrics which are being pulled from a bunch of different services as well. So it's not, we want to specifically look at API, but we're getting data here from, from all of the, the other um, applications and services. And what we, what we have is connections active. So you can see here we've got another one, connections active. And here, again, there's another and another. So lots of, lots of different metrics. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to, to filter this information. So to, to kind of filter that information, what we can actually do is use the labels that, that Envoy is, is providing for us. So let's, let's do a filter and let's add a label which is the, the Envoy listener address. So if I go over here and I add 
the autocomplete should So we, um, we've got HTTP and listener, and what we want is, sorry, the, the listener. So I'm expanding that, and I want the Envoy listener address. So the Envoy listener address, this is going to, to show me the, the connection metrics for each of the listeners that, um, that exist in the system. And you can see there's, well, there's a lot of, um, a lot of them. There's a bunch of different, different listeners that, that, are, that are present. So for example, we've got a number of different ports because for every port that, that Envoy is listening on, you've got that there. So for example, in, in terms of console, console service mesh, the, the public listener, the, the inbound connections are always going to be running on 20,000 and that's just kind of like a standard that, that we use. And again, like different, um, different service meshes will use different things, but I can actually apply that filter there. And what I can do is I can just get the connections in this specific instance for that pod on port 20,000. Now that's, that's great. And, and in the instance of API where we're actually, we only have a single instance, but what we want to be able to do is be able to do some, some sub filtering. So you can actually have multiples of, of these pods, and you can also use regular expressions. So for example, let's make this more generic. So let's get all connection listeners that are going to be running on port 20,000. So we can just use a regular expression, and we can change the, the prom SQL query to use a regular expression. And now what we have are a bunch more metrics. So now this is all of the, the Envoy public listeners that are in our, in our system. But this is also, can, you can see that you have like the currency service and we've got payment service and all sorts of things in there. So what we want to be able to do is add another filter and again, we can, we can use the, the, the metrics inside of uh, the, the tags which are added by Envoy to be able to, to kind of do those filters. So I could do things like filter by the pod. Now this isn't added, pod is a, a label is not added by Envoy. Envoy has no idea of your pod. This pod is actually added by Prometheus when it, when it scrapes. So I could use, I could use pod. Um, I also have some, some Envoy specific metrics, such as console source service. And if you roll your mouse over here, you'll see all of those labels. So you can see there we've got the source data center, uh, the namespace, the petitions, um, listener addresses, instance, and, and all of this metadata is associated with your, your metrics. So what we want to do is we want to specifically look at the, the API service. So what we can do is we can filter this. If we just look here, using service, and we can get API. So let's add that service, and again, Grafana is going to auto-complete for me. So this is, this is cool. So now, what I have are a, a bunch of, um, a bunch of metrics. My regex is, uh, is not actually working for me here. So, let me just, while we figure this out, 
If you run into any trouble, just raise your hand, I'll come over. There we go. we've got that there okay <clears throat> now what you're seeing is is three three end, three sort of series so we've got three series there whereas we've only got a single api so why why are we seeing three series basically what looks like three three different listeners three different sets of connections to actually different listeners well the reason for this is that these are, are actually the way that Envoy does its threading and concurrency model. So Envoy, in terms of its connection statistics, is going to give you a, a, a line item or a data series for each of the, the internal sort of threads that it uses for its concurrency model. And again, depending on how your, your service mesh is configured, it might only have a single thread, you might use sort of multiple threads. In this instance, what we have is two, two worker threads, which is shown here by the yellow line and the green line. And if we roll over there, I'll just show you here, if we roll over there, you will actually see that it uses worker ID, and it has worker ID uh, one and two. But the, the thing with that is, if you look at the, the five and the seven there, showing you is it's kind of showing you the main broker thread or the kind of the, 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 the aggregated before it hands it off to its, its concurrency model. So in our instance, what we're really interested in, we want to, you know, we want to look at the kind of the overall connections. So we've got two options. One is we can sum the worker threads or we can just look at the, the main thread. The kind of the, in the documentation, the reason that Envoy says that it gives you these individual line items when it comes to performance tuning, what we really want to be able to do is, is see that there is an equal balance of connections across each of the... Oh, it's okay. I'm, I can, you can give me all right. Uh, an equal balance across both, both of the worker threads. It's a, I think it's a fairly new feature that's been added in either in 123 or 122. It's a, it definitely wasn't there sort of <clears throat> a little while back. So what we want to do is, again, just kind of go through and take a, a sub-filter. So instead of, you see there, Envoy Worker ID equals one. But we want to just get the main thing. So what we can actually do is we'll do a sub-filter. We're going to do Envoy Worker ID. And we're going to say Envoy Worker ID is blank. And there we go. So that's now just giving us the, the main thread. So we now know, because this is a, this is a gauge, it's a snapshot in time, that there are about 12 connections, consistent connections to the API service, which is, which is good. So let's grab that, that statistic. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new dashboard. And we're going to go through and we're going to start building up a, a panel. So you can use your, your other tab there so that you can keep 
your explore window open. Let me go over to dashboards, new dashboard, and I'm going to add a new panel. So then what I can do is I can just grab this query from there and I can drop it into my dashboard. And then I'm going to give this a name, API, API connections. So again, we, we've got the ability there. We're going to change the, the time. Let's just look at the, the last five minutes. If you look at the data over a little bit more sort of time there, if you're looking at it over a, a greater duration, you'll, you can see it does change over time. So the connection pool is, is expanding, but uh, we've got that, that information there. So the, the next thing is that we can, we can give that a name. So we're going to call that active downstream connections. And we're going to just paste that into the legend that we've got our active downstream connections. So the, the next thing that we want to do is we want to start looking at upstream connections. And this is where things are going to get interesting because the payment service is not actually running it. It's complaining that it doesn't have any CPU. So let me see if I can be creative. Uh, even though I'm starting to lose. Hmm? Even though I'm starting to lose with uh, more CPU. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is the, the payments deployment. It's a fairly straightforward Kubernetes deployment there. Um, if I scroll down, I'll be able to find the resources where it's specifying the, the amount of CPU for requests and limits. Sorry, we got a little teething trouble. What? What's this doing?
I apologize. The, the, um, the machines that we spun up to, to create the environments are, haven't got a, enough, they've come up and they haven't got enough CPUs allocated to them, so the application is, uh, is not starting. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's gonna, it'll depend on which, which, um, which pod has, has come up first. Um, I'll tell you what, for now, Okay, so I apologize, but um, let's let's restart our environments because we've just uh, we've just up the the CPU. It's going to be quicker than than faffing around trying to remove the the resource um, limitations. So if you if you just go back to the I apologize about this. It was fine yesterday, but somewhere between getting on a plane and getting off a plane. It isn't. And, and it's kind of like the way that we've built the workshop, it, um, everything is very, very dependent upon this app having three tiers. Because actually, if the payment service isn't starting, well, then you're not going to get any requests through to the currency service. So I'm not going to be able to show you the gRPC stuff. And um, and and yes, so so I apologise about that. But but again, you know what what I will what you can do is that now we've we fixed the number of CPUs. You will be able to kind of work through this at your own leisure as well. So we'll you know we'll run through these things and I'll explain them to you. Because we're a little bit kind of short on time, I apologize that we're, you know, we're not, we won't have the, the leisure to, to kind of go through much in depth, but we can go through, we'll explain the concepts and you can go away and you can literally just spin this up when you get back home and, and, um, and run through it your, yourself and, and obviously feel free to reach out to me. And we're just creating a new, um, a new link for you, which will just be easier to... I'm just getting a bitly link for you. Okay. 
So can you go back to the, um, the, the main page there? We just get a link for you to get back there. And we're just going to stop those machines. We're just going to restart them with one which has more CPUs. at the start of your screen is this beautiful stop button right next to continue track. Remember that time in college when your teacher was basically like, yeah, you, you gotta keep working on this? Right now you don't. Just hit the stop button, terminate that instance like it hurt you, and we'll get a new one. Because it, in fact, it did hurt us. It wasted our time by being too underpowered. Right, so we'll do that live. There we go. And then, if we go to this URL, um, which says this one. And I'm just gonna bring it up here. So if you can just pop to that URL. Oh, sorry, it's on a different screen. There we go. Demystifying metrics is also very much about typing in long strings into address bars, Grafana search query bars, pretty much that. And as before, if you run into any trouble, raise your hand, we'll be right over, help you figure this out. Can you imagine in olden times if it was that easy to get 16 gigs of RAM, just like that? New machine. I mean, you could argue we probably would have went for the 16 gig option in the beginning because it would have been such a pain in the backside to, to change it. We would have just gone all in on the, the maximum. Has everybody got that, got that URL there so I can just go back and um, um, I'll actually up. click my start button? Uh, Let me um, switch on the ring again because then it's going to be easier. All right. So, wow, I forgot we make uh, people actually read that. And then start track. Excellent. Like it's all ready. What I'm going to do okay. is uh, I'm going to hit um, stop so yep. everyone can see that. And then start track. And let's see. Just click the button. Because it pops it in. Hmm. Is that the same thing? Still getting a few that are uh, pending. Oh, that's the old. Um... Yeah. All right. So let me switch to this one real quick.
if we can't get going on with the uh, HTTP metrics. Yeah, maybe uh, switch that. So from a code perspective, it should give you a new environment. Yeah, still the same one. All right, let's not, we're gonna run out of time. So let's, um, let's kind of um, look at, what we can do is we can kind of start digging into HTTP requests, because I think, um, we can still look at HTTP requests with regard of the, the API service, and we can start looking at some of those, those metrics. So with that, um, let me just log in here. With that previously, what we were kind of looking at is connection metrics. Now, the, the thing is about connection metrics, they are, they are useful but they, they don't really tell you what's going on because in the instance that you're using connection pooling, you have multiple requests which are using the same connection. A connection will also only tell you if a connection has succeeded or if a connection has failed. There is no knowledge around there of whether a request has succeeded or a request has failed. And the, the only way that you can, you can kind of do this is by looking at a layer seven or an application level protocol as a, um, as, a, as a metric. And Envoy has the capability to do this. So when we kind of look through and we said, look, we've got listeners and we've got listener filters and, and things like that, to be able to, to configure and to be able for Envoy to emit connection level, sorry, request level metrics, then we need to use a, a filter. And generally, the, you know, your service mesh is going to, to do this for you. You're not going to have to actually make this configuration yourself. But in, in terms of Istio, what you would do in order to be able to configure something as HTTP is you use the, the service declaration and then you specify the app protocol or something else. And if you're using console, you use our sort of configuration. So the, the API service has actually been, been configured as HTTP. And what that will do is it creates this configuration. Now, I think it is useful to understand Envoy's internal configuration that you can get from the, the config dump because when you're starting to look at your metrics and you want to kind of understand which particular listener you should look at, which um, what, what is this metric, what is this, this label, what does it kind of mean, then the Envoy configuration is actually a good place to, to kind of go and digging in. And this is what, what would have been configured inside of Envoy. So we have an HTTP connection manager, the, uh, the stat prefix there, we're, we're kind of on the public listener, so that'll be some of the, the, the labels and things like that that we're adding. And we don't have any sort of um, root configuration or that other than everything is going to go to the local app. So that's kind of the base level configuration, but it means that for every connection and every, that, that's made to Envoy, Envoy is gonna go, right, I know these connections are going to be HTTP. So what it does internally is it will decode the, uh, the data flowing over the connection, decoding it into its HTTP, which it can then use to be able to define metrics because it can look at things like the, the HTTP response codes. It can then look at the, the payload and um, the data sizes and things like that in order to be able to, to report richer, richer information. And again, what we can do is we can look at downstream requests. So we're gonna look at Envoy Listener, HTTP downstream, RQ, X, X. So what this convention, again, it's the, the listener. Now you'll see that because we do have um, HTTP metrics, it has the, the uh, HTTP in the name. And again, we're looking at downstream, but this time instead of connections, it's, it's request. And what the, the X, X 
part of, um, of this is going to be is the response code. So when I run, run that, you can see that I've got, well, you know, a, a huge number, number of metrics in there. And the thing is that different from when you looked at the connection metrics before, connection was a gauge. It's a snapshot of a point in time. Request is actually a counter. And because it's a counter, what it will, will kind of show is the change over time which means that I can actually um, run some, some functions to, to be able to show requests per second and things like that. And we're gonna, we're gonna look at how, how you do that. So the first, thing, the first thing is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna filter it. So we want to use some of the filters. We're gonna use the connection manager prefix, again, to, to use that tag to be able to get our, our public listener and we are going to specify our service, which is going to be our API service. So if I go into my box there and I filter that, then what we can see is that we've got a, a graph there, which is, well, it, it's, uh, it's kind of increasing over time. But the, the other thing that you will you'll kind of see around that is that it's giving the, the HTTP response code. Now, because we've got that um, payment service which is having deployed, well, every request in API is resulting in an error, which is why we have here, if you look at the Envoy response code class, so for every, every HTTP response code, well, through, through the classes, so one through five, Envoy is going to add a label to the metric, which means that you're going to get a, have the ability to have an individual series inside of, of your dashboard. And, and this is in itself not particularly sort of interesting because you don't want to know the number of requests as they're increasing. What we really want is how many requests per, per second that we have. So in order to, to, to be able to kind of do that, then you know what we can we can kind of do is we can use some some functions. So in the in the connections um, tutorial, what we were going to show you is we were showing you how you can use the Prometheus query, sorry, the, the Prometheus function rate in order to be able to convert that that counter into requests per second. So let's add the function rate. I add right here, and now what rate requires is basically a um, it, it's a bucket size. So the, the the bucket size is is based on how often Prometheus has scraped the metrics from your Envoy proxy. So for example, if if Prometheus is sorry, if Envoy is only getting scraped every sixty seconds then you can't have a resolution which is, um, which is greater than 60 seconds because you only have the cardinality of your data is 60 seconds. So you, you specify the, the kind of the bucket size to kind of see what you want the aggregation and therefore what the kind of, I suppose, the, the, the smoothing. Now, Grafana has implemented this, this really handy variable called rate interval. And rate interval is not a Prometheus a PromQL capability. It is something which is specific to Grafana. And what this, this variable equates to is basically four times the, the sort of the minimum resolution. So Grafana will kind of figure out what the, the scrape duration is, it multiplies it by four, and that gives you, in most instances, a, um, a pretty good bucket size. Uh, why does this hate me? Has this just killed my instance?
There we go. So now what we, we can see here is the requests per second. Because we've, we've used that, that, um, that rate, it's, it's converted the counter into um, requests over uh, per, per second. And if you look at the, the kind of the number of requests you're getting here, it's, it's around about 10, which is approximately the same as the, the connection pool that we were, we were seeing, seeing earlier. Um, it does seem to have actually, has that restarted? God, please. Oh, my pods are all running. That's good news for me. So we, we've got that information. So we can see requests per second. Now, what you see here in the yellow line is anything that resulted in a response code 200. What you see on the red line is anything that resulted in a response code 500 or 5XX. The, the reason you've seen the 5XXs is because one of the payment service instances is reporting errors. So you're going to get errors coming back. So this is actually as expected. What we can see here is also um, 400s. Well, it's, it's, a, it's an, an empty line entry. So the, the first thing that we can kind of do is let's, let's just take this and let's put it into our dashboard and we'll look at how we can actually clean this up and create something a little bit more useful. Uh, no, I don't want to explore. I want browse, new dashboard, new panel. Apply. Now we can see that there. So now what we can actually do in terms of the legend is we can, we can use that information in the, in the legend. And the, the, the information in the legend we can use here is you can see that we're using Envoy Response Code class. Now that's one of the labels from, from that metric item. So we can take that and we can actually use that in our legend here. And now what this is going to show us is we're actually seeing now that we've got all of those those items. Uh, the series are, are nicely nicely named based on based on the, um, the 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 metric label. We can also change the the mode into table, and we can kind of enable some some various other bits and pieces on there, so we can kind of see some. Um, some details you'll be able to see, like the the averages and, and stuff like that, and that's all all configurable from from those chart options there on the right hand side. Now, what we don't want really is we don't really want to see these these kind of legend items for one x and four um, x when when they don't you know they they don't really exist. It's just that Envoy is reporting. Um, a metric with a label which has a, a zero count. So what we can actually do is we can just add a, a little sort of thing there which is saying where it's not equal to zero. And what that will do is it just cleans up our, our metrics there. So we've got that, that information there. All right. So I'm going to, as I said, the, the the way that this was all set up, barring not having uh, enough CPU, is that um, we we have the the sort of the ability that you can kind of run through this uh, as a self-paced self-paced workshop. And what um what we're going to kind of do is we'll we'll kind of just move on a little bit so we can get through some I can explain some more of the the bits and pieces. One of the metrics which I think is really important, and again, like the, the sort of the common things that you're looking at, you're looking at errors, you're looking at retries, you're looking at some of the, the reliability patterns that you've configured in, inside of Envoy. You want to look at latency. You want to, to kind of um, do things like that. And it's, it's really sort of a really important sort of metric to, to have. I mean, latency is 
I mean, it, it tells you whether you, your sort of application is within normal bounds. It can tell you whether you've had a regression in your deployment, or importantly, whether you have any sort of outliers and things like that. Now, there is a blue button on there which will basically dump the, the, the sort of uh, the, the cluster dump. And let's just let me just run that, and I'll I'll show you what's going on. So what I'm doing here is I have just run, um, it's basically kubectl exec, and all I'm doing is I'm, I'm calling config dump, which is on Envoy's admin port. So Envoy's admin port in our system is running on 19,000. Um, so I can call, sorry, um, stats Prometheus to get the, the raw information, and I'm just running a grep on that to just get the, the time bucket queries. And if you look, you'll, you'll see that you're getting like a bunch of different metrics. So for example, here we've got um, 846. So the local cluster API is 846. Now, what that means is what, what Envoy, this is a histogram. So what Envoy is doing is it's grouping requests into buckets based on their, their duration. So in this instance, it's less than or equal to half millisecond. And then here we've got you know, less than, than one millisecond. So the number of requests, so anything 3,000 took less than 10 milliseconds and 25. And by using this, this sort of, uh, the, these histograms, what we can actually do is we can, we can represent this and kind of get the data out of the bucket so we can look at the 50 percentile, which is kind of the, the median or the, the sort of where the, the bulk of your, your requests are kind of coming into, and then we want to look at the, as I say, the, the outlier. So we want to look at the, the, uh, the 95 percentile, maybe the 99 percentile, the 90 percentile. So let's, let's just kind of um, go through and let's just put this into, into a chart, and we'll have a look at how we can use that, that histogram quantile function. So the raw data, well, it looks like this. So what you're seeing is like 10, 12. Now, this is not the, the duration. This is not um, milliseconds per second. What this is, is at, it is requests per second that took less than, uh, where is the line item in there? less than 50 milliseconds. So it's, it's basically the histogram information. Reporting it like this is not particularly, not particularly useful. So what we're going to do is we need to transform that into something more, more interesting. Now, what um, Prometheus has is a, uh, oh yeah, we can do this, is it has a, a query, sorry, a function called Histogram quantile. And what histogram quantile does is it takes the, the histogram metric and it basically runs a bunch of maths on it, put the, the metric back into, into the buckets, and it'll pull the, the 50 percentile, the median, and then it's reporting that as the, the, the actual duration. So this here is actually 38.8 milliseconds as, as, a, as a duration. So now over the last five minutes, you can see that, you know, within, within reason, our application is fairly static. It's, it's kind of like going from a minimum of around, oh, cool. Um, it's going from minimum here of like sort of 30, 38.2 to kind of a maximum up there of around 40. And um, it's, a, it's a sort of a fairly sort of consistent, but what the, the, the median doesn't really sort of show you is it doesn't show you the outliers and the outliers are important so let's let's just put this into our dashboard so I'm going to add a panel and what I want to do is I'm going to paste in there we've got the 50 percentile and we're going to also report Let's just do the 95 percentile. 
So you can see when I, when I kind of change this, that the 95 percentile in, in terms of um, my, my application is, is running around 90%. So 5% of requests in my system exceed 90 milliseconds, which, um, which is great because now we can kind of start to see the, the, the outliers. So when you want to kind of looking at, at why you, this information is useful is you want to be looking at, if, is there a really great difference? So this, I would actually say is fairly normal. It's just normal behavior. But in, in some instances, what you, you will kind of see is that you might see errors. Now, you might look at your, your latency, and latency could be fine, but you might be starting to see errors. There may be a spike in, in latency. Now, that, that spike in latency could just be increased traffic. It could just be the system in general is slowing down. It can also be an outlier. So if you think about something like a database lock, now a database lock, which basically slows down the requests for every single individual in the system, will pull up your median. But it's, it's not a, a median increase that's due to sort of across all your requests. It's, it's a single request, right? So then looking at sort of spikes like that is really important when you start to do your performance tuning and when you're starting to look at your, your sort of system's health. So you, you want to always be kind of reporting, as I say, the, probably the, the, the median, which is useful for, for sort of day-to-day -day running, and, and your outliers, um, 90 percentile, 95, maybe 99 percentile. So now that's, that's, we've got the ability to kind of see the, the requests per second, but also the, the time it's taking for, for each of those, those requests. Yes. Uh, yeah, so that's a very good question. So the, the, the question there was, um, from the, the 95 percentile, is there a way to determine if it's a specific pod that is, that is causing that? Because you, you, know, you might have a, a noisy neighbor on a machine or something along those lines. And the, what we're actually showing here is we only have a single instance, but if you look at, uh, you've got the, the instance label there, you have the, um, the pod label as well. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting about the laser pointer. You've got the pod label as well there. So all of that information you can use. Now, ordinarily, what, what I tend to do is I, don't, I, I generally sum these, so I group them together to look at a service as a whole as opposed to um, an individual service instance. But to your point, like when you find an outlier, it is actually possible that it's not across the board a problem. It could be an individual instance. And the... The, the metrics are all there to kind of be able to dig in there and do your do your forensics. Yeah, generally you, you kind of, you know, there's the, too much information can be overwhelming. So you, when you're using your dashboards from a sort of a day to day basis, you want to represent the the metrics that give you enough information to understand that something's wrong, not necessarily that the specific of what is wrong. Because you want to be able to take a quick glance and go, is this okay? Is this not okay? Because you've always got the ability to dig deeper and look at sort of other dashboards, maybe more specific ones, or, or you can actually just go in and, and use the metric explorer to kind of dig in to try and find the, the root cause. Because if, if you put too much information on your dashboards, it's just the signal noise. You, you, you can just look at it and you go, well, you know, I don't, I don't really know if there's anything. So it, it's better to kind of... Um, Let's say you can figure that. All right, so gRPC services. So we, we kind of said that, you know, so gRPC is HTTP in a sense, well, it's HTTP2, in a sense that the gRPC requests are multiplexed over HTTP. Um, but you're not using HTTP in terms of a RESTful sense, so you, you're not really using your HTTP verbs like your GET, your POST, um, and you're certainly not using your uh, HTTP response codes in the same way. So in order to, to determine service 
problems and service traffic for, for gRPC-based services, you've got to look at the very specific protocol. And Envoy, again, has a, has a filter, which is the, um, the gRPC stats filter. And what that will do is Envoy will, for every, every request, it will basically understand that this is a, uh, a gRPC method call, not a, a plain HTTP request. It will decode it. It will pull out the, the service, the method name, and importantly, the error code, and it'll be able to create an individual metric for that. What, um, what it will also do is it will attempt to kind of create some, some generic sort of uh, metrics that you, you, you would use as if it was an HTTP request. And um, it does that by default. You can disable that, or your, maybe your service mesh will or, or won't. It, it, it depends. But the beauty of looking at the gRPC specific metrics in Envoy is that you get method and service level information, which is you know you can you can see very granularly. If we we kind of look at um, some of those metrics, like some of the common metrics there, you you have um, the basics, method success and failure. Um, method total. Now, success and failure, like a, a um, gRPC is basically you get an error code of a zero, which is a success. Anything which is not a zero is classified as a failure. Now, that could be a, it depends on how the service is being implemented. I've seen gRPC services which will return, say, an error code um, to, to indicate that a, a, an item doesn't exist or something like that. So it's, it's kind of, I think, of somewhat use just to use kind of success and fail. But what you do also have is the ability to kind of look at more, more granular requests. And Envoy is going to create metrics which are kind of rooted like this. So we have Envoy cluster, gRPC, the name of the gRPC service, of which a, an application may have multiple and then the gRPC method, which is handle. So if I, let me just grab this and let me paste this into the Grafana Explorer here. And we will see that, that you've got kind of a number of different metrics. So we've got a number of metrics, then we've got zero, so successful requests, and failed requests, which are 13. Now, the, the currency service returns a gRPC error code 13 on a failure. So that's why we, um, we kind of see those two things. But when you look back and think about the, the request metrics, now what you were seeing with the request metrics was that you had a label. There was a, a, a metric label which had the, the specific error code. We're not getting that with the, the gRPC metrics. So we, we need to get a little bit creative is probably the polite way of saying hacky. But um, we can you know we can do quite a lot with with prom sequel. So the first thing that we can do with with prom sequel is that every metric can be referenced by its its actual metric name, so envoy cluster fake service handle underscore zero. But you can also use this kind of very generic way of addressing a metric, which is you just use the brackets, the, the generic label underscore underscore name, which is the metric name, and then we can use a regular expression. So for example, here, if I run this, what I get are all of the, um, the fake service handler metrics for all of the, 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 the sort of the, the, different, the different codes, right? So we can see all of the, the zero codes, we can see all of the 13 codes. And again, we've got three instances of the payment service calling two instances of currency. So we, we have an individual metric item for each pod. So first, the next thing we wanna do is we, well, we, wanna, we wanna be able to kind of report this and get that error code as a label. So what we can do is we can, we can actually extract the label. So the, to extract a label, we can again use a, a prom SQL query, 
which is using label replace. And what label replace will allow us to do is it allows us to define a regular expression and say, from this existing label, add a new label. And it uses this syntax here. So the metric that you want to use, the label name that you want to add, the regular expression that is going to, to match. So this is like the match group. The label that we want to search for and a regular expression, which is a search. Um, so you end up with, with this. So we have label replace. We're using that generic metric approach. We're saying we want to create a new label called code. We want to use the match group one. We want to use a source label of name. And then we have a regular expression here, which is basically pulling out the, the error code. And what I'm also doing is I'm going to wrap that in a rate so that I'm actually getting the, the number of, of requests per second. And you can see now that we have the code. Okay. Now, there's a, there's a little kind of little trick here, and, and I'll be 100% honest. Um, I'm not entirely certain how this works. It seems to be some sort of uh, magic inside of prom SQL, but by adding, what you basically have is the, the precision. By adding an additional colon to your um, duration, what I'm actually forcing um, Prometheus to do is run a subquery. So then label replace returns the, the correct vector that is needed to be able to use by rate. It's um, an, an interesting one. So now, what we can do is we, we, we can either, you know, we don't necessarily want to look at these as um, individual line items. We can group them together. And to group them together, it's, it's just a simple matter of using the, the sum query. So I can wrap all of that in a sum. And then I can say by. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use code, which is my, the label that I've extracted. And now what we can see is we've got a, a nice clean chart, which is showing us that approximately 9.7 required gRPC method calls per second resulted in a status OK or a code 0. And 13 resulted, sorry, um, about half a request per second resulted in a, a status code zero, uh, sorry, 13, or an error. So we've, we've got that, um, that ability. Um, we are, look, we're, we're out of time, but this, this Instruct Lab will, will be available to, to run through at your own pace, and it will have the correct number of CPUs, so you're not going to have to deal with painful um, payments pods failing. I apologize for that. Um, so it'll be, uh, we, well, we'll keep it up for like a couple of weeks, a few weeks. Don't worry about that. It'll be fine. You can actually also, um, I'll, we'll put a link in the, the description of the Instruct, but you can actually just download this lab and run it locally. All you need is, um, is Docker on your, on your local machine. So if you've got Docker and a little application called Shipyard, you can spin everything up locally, including the documentation. <coughs> Uh, to, to run through the lab on your on your local machine, and then you can of course play around with things and make some changes and and stuff like that. And we'll we'll give you the um, the link here where you'll be able to download um, that that from, and I will put a readme in there. But it's um, HashiCorp Dev Advocate slash Envoy Metrics Demystified, and we'll put the instructions there so that you'll be able to run it. Um, offline and on your local your local machine. The only thing you need to remember is that on sketch shed shed.com sketchy instruct? No the Oh yes. Wherever you find the schedule, I'm guessing that's shed. Uh, we'll have the links in there. Easy for you to click either through the um, browser based environment or by just cloning it yourself and working through it. And for fun we also included a packer image that we use as a backend. So if you want to have some fun with that, go ahead. But the, yeah, we, we have um, an additional, um, there's additional labs in there as well. We go into looking at how retries work and, and we, we kind of glossed over some of the, the connection level stuff, but we, we look at um, 
things around the sort of the, as I say, the, the connection level stuff and, and looking at how you can actually identify that you're using connection pooling or you're not using connection pooling and all of that information is in, in that lab there. So thank you, thank you so much uh, for bearing with us. Lunchtime, I hope you all have a, a lovely rest of your service, MeshCon, and a great um, KubeCon. And if you've got any questions, you know, just reach out to us, and we're more than more than happy to to dig in. Just out of interest, which what what service meshes are you all using? Predominantly Istio base, yeah. So it's the the metrics are rooted. It's just Envoy. Like the, the Envoy documentation is really good. You'll find we've got the links in here, but there's there's the statistics for each of the different components. Envoy will tell you what each statistic does, and it goes into depth on 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 the varying things. There are a lot of them. And I think the key thing is learning and just kind of understanding what the most important ones are and the, kind of the high level, because there is a, a lot of stuff that goes very, very granular, but might not be the sort of the day-to-day -day usage. What we wanted to cover is kind of the stuff that we feel is kind of you know day-to-day, -day, which is connections, request, um, packet sizes, durations, gRPC, and um, some of the reliability. Thank you. With that, thank you. And see you at the next one.